chapter four, we'll be talking about quality control, and then later on we will uh, go over a presentation on how to get your clothes um, hung up on hangers and what they need to look like and how your toys need to be um, marked. But let's first talk about quality. Um, we've had a lot of complaints both from our members and our um, public buyers about the quality lacking in the last couple of sales. Um, a group will be put together to comb through the clothes during and after drop-off. Uh, there will be reject boxes around different locations during the drop-off, uh, the member selling or member and seller shopping and during the sale. Uh, usually during the sale we put it behind the um, registers, but before that we'll have them out on the floor. Our committee chairs will keep track of rejects. Basically what happens is we will um, look at the item that got rejected and we'll attach a tag that tells you why it's being rejected and uh, committee chairs always have the uh, final say on that. Um, if you have five or more rejects, you'll get an additional notice in the form of an email after the sale. If you have two consecutive sale notices, um, you will be kept from selling in the next sale. So a general definition of what we're looking for is all items must be in good condition with all parts included unless it's marked on the tag with further description of the issue. Uh, we're trying to look at similar to the Amazon used good condition. Um, there, they state that the item shows wear from consistent use but it remains in good condition and functions properly. So specifically for clothes, um, you know, a, a small stain is going to be okay, but large or multiple stains are not. Um, those will be rejected, so um, if you do have a small stain, please mark it as so and price it appropriately. A pen size hole could be okay, but, you know, a rip where there's not supposed to be, I realize that the jeans with the rips are in style right now. That's going to be considered okay, but a rip where there's not supposed to be um, will be rejected. Uh, please make sure your clothes have been washed. We've um, had a couple of times where we've seen like fresh stains, like somebody ate a bowl of oatmeal, spilled it all over the front of the shirt, and then the shirt was put in the sale. So nobody's going to buy that. It just makes people um, not want to return because they just feel like there must be other stuff that is sneaking through that hasn't been washed. Um, toss or donate things that have stains, holes, excessive wear, etc. Uh, specific to anything that has electronics in it, so think of toys and infant equipment, um, like um, those exercisers that play music or swings. Uh, try to provide working batteries so the item can be tested, especially for higher priced toys and equipment. Make sure you test things before selling if they have electronics to make sure that they work. If your electronics no longer work but the item is still usable, say um, for example a swing, maybe it plays music. The music doesn't play anymore but the swing itself is still functional, I would mark that on the tag and price it lower. Um, if the electronics aren't working and it greatly affects the use of the item, don't sell it. Related to toys, make sure your toys, games, puzzles, etc. have all the pieces and parts. Um, if they don't have all the pieces and parts, you know, if it doesn't affect the play of the game or it's um, 
a bag of miscellaneous pieces that you don't know whether they go together. You should probably mark it as such and price low. We do every once in a while have some complaints about toys, uh, missing parts. So if there are too many missing parts, just don't sell it. And other information, make sure your equipment has been sanitized and clean. This includes potties, bathroom equipment, diaper pails, sheets, etc. Every once in a while we'll get a complaint that um, a potty, per se, let's say, um, was purchased. And when they got home, they found that it was still dirty. Uh, let's make sure that we get everything cleaned out. Nobody wants to have that experience. Um, outdoor items should be free of mud, excessive dirt, and water because it's going to make a mess all over our floors. And we're responsible for making sure the gym floors are staying clean and aren't getting scratched up. So we want to be really careful of all that. Um, I realize that space is limited on the tag description field in my sale manager. Uh, your options are to write on the tag if it's something quick to explain minor quality issues like a um, minor stain. But make sure you do not write over barcodes or the prices. You cannot change the prices by writing on the tag. Uh, the other option is you could just attach an additional paper to the item and explain what the issue is, and that would be the best. Uh, next, we'll talk about presentation of your items. Okay, let's talk about the actual tagging and presentation of your items. One thing I think I mentioned before is you will need to print your tags on a white card stock. As you can see, it's a little thicker than paper, uh, regular printer paper. One thing I know I did not mention in the My Sale Manager videos was your cutoff for entering tags is going to be 1 a.m. on Fridays. So basically, late into Thursday night is going to be the cutoff if that makes the most sense. Um, Thursday night will be your last chance to enter tags. You can still print them off the next day if you need to, but if they're not entered into the system by then, you won't be able to sell it. So we will start with safety panning the tag on. There's a very specific spot that you can see here where you need to pen. You don't want to pin over the barcode because that's what our system needs to read in order to put it into the register. When you're hanging your items, I have an outfit here. You can use different types of hangers. If you run out of the outfit hangers, you can, as you hopefully can see, rubber band the two hangers together. Otherwise, you know, the outfit hangers do come attached. The other thing you want to make sure you do when you have a um, outfit is to pin them together at least once or twice. And the reason for that is that when people start taking the hangers off in the checkout line to recycle the hangers, uh, the items would be detached and the Register workers won't know whether these two items go together. There's no tag on this part. So basically, anytime you put an item on the hanger, you want to make sure your tag is on. As you're looking at the item on the right side of the item, that the hanger forms a question mark. Or if you want to put it this way, it turns to the left so it's hung on a rack like this and everything is done the same way so here's an example of a shirt again we have the question mark from the hanger and the tag is actually placed on the right hand side 
Same would apply for skirts and pants. Just a different type of hanger. Forms a question mark. The tag is on the right hand side. This makes it easier when you're flipping through clothes. Everything you would see would all be facing the same way and your tags would be on the right hand side. And at the end of this section, I will get into actually tagging with the tagging gun and I'll show you where we recommend putting the barbs through because they can cause holes in the clothes. So you wanna be careful where you put those tag th tags through. So if you are using tape um, to hang, let's say socks. Socks aren't gonna be hanging, they're gonna be in a basket. Um, your best bet is to probably put the socks in a bag, fold the bag over, and put tape here so that it's not easy to open. So you can see I put tape there. And also we're putting tape across the top so the tag is on, making sure not to put tape over the barcode. Same kind of idea with books. You're just putting tape on the top end and not over the barcode. If you want to price multiple books together, like I've done here, um, I've used rubber bands here to kind of keep the books together. You might have some other ideas. You could use tape, but these were kind of flexible and fragile, so I didn't want to put tape all over them. But I did tape the top, and you'll notice again, the barcode's not covered. With shoes, this is where those um, tags come in handy, where you can just uh, zip tie it together through the laces or through the backs. The other option is you um, could zip tie them here. If you run, ran out of tag or zip ties, you could use really big um, safety pins. And if it's fabric, you could put it through the fabric or through the lace to attach them together. The tag here I've attached as well with a safety pin. And again, it's up here, not covering the barcode. So basically you want to find a way to keep your shoes together so they don't get lost. That's basically what you're trying to do here. Any way you can figure out how to do that, that's fine by us. Um, here I have a puzzle. Again, you probably want to kind of find a way to tape the um, either bag or box together so um, it doesn't open easily. And then you put the tape up here and your barcode's free. And a couple of toys. So toys that have multiple pieces, you're going to either want to bag separately and tape to the big piece or if you can fit the whole thing in a bag, that's great. Again, you have the socks folded over and tape on this back side so it's not easy to open and take parts out. Obviously, if someone really wants to, they can do that. But hopefully we'll have people patrolling and making sure people aren't taking toys out. Um, again, taping the top part. On the towards the right hand um, I try and keep it on the right hand even for toys but that's not always possible as you will see for some of your bigger toys that don't have um, don't really fit in a bag I taped as best I could to any part that I could get it taped to and then this has a remote control so all the parts are wrapped in that clear shipping tape that we talked about multiple times so they don't fall apart. It shouldn't easily fall apart. Um, like I said, if this if it came with multiple pieces, you could use a smaller bag and tape it to the side or wrap it around so other pieces are all there. And if you have a toy like a stuffed animal or it has some softer parts where you can actually use the safety pins, you could pen the tag on that way. So once you get everything tagged and hung, uh, your best bet is to 
make sure it's all sorted into groups. You'll want to make sure you have some tubs. All tubs need to be labeled. So I have my seller number and you can see I've reused this label. It's been infant, it's been puzzles and games and books. Try and, uh, it's really helpful if you try and put what is going to be in the tub. So when we're setting it out, the person knows. And your lids should also have your seller number and uh, description of what's in the box. That way, when we're putting items out, it can easily go to that section and start being unloaded. So clothes, you would just put all your clothes, your girl's clothes in one box bin and your boy's clothes in another bin, um, your toys in a bin, and you might need multiple bins. You can use cardboard boxes, but we don't necessarily um, keep your cardboard boxes. And once drop off is over, you'll want to take about half your bins home with you. I've also used myself some larger paper bags or plastic bags to uh, group like items that I didn't have a lot of, like swimsuits maybe, and you know, labeled that it was swimsuits and had all the swimsuits in there ordered by size. So whatever you can find to bring it, just realize that for us towards the end, it's really helpful if you, we have at least some boxes or tubs that we can sort back into. We're not gonna be sorting back into small bags. So um, please make sure you have, you know, enough tubs to have us sort back into and have you take your stuff home. And here in a minute, I will show you how to uh, use the tagging gun. So I don't actually have a tagging gun myself. Um, as you saw in the last video, I bought like a thousand safety pins. So, um, new last sale, we are allowing tagging guns. The barbs, which are the little plastic pieces that attach the tags, uh, should be around one inches. Anything longer, the tags are more likely to get ripped off because they get caught on things. So, um, our recommendation is also to use a fine needle um, gun. That way, it reduces the likelihood of uh, having holes in the clothing. Our first preference is that you put the tag through the manufacturer's tag on the collar or the waistband of your clothes. The second preference is um, some shirts have some extra fabric on the seam, so on the right side of your shirt or your pants there might be some extra fabric that you can pierce through. Our third fabric is, um, or our third option is the extra seam fabric. If you would see it like right here, or like right along here, of the sleeves on a shirt. Um, if all else fails, then you can go right in through the armpit seam and that'll uh, reduce the likelihood of introducing holes which we don't want in our clothes and if you have any questions about actually working with the tagging gun there's a couple of YouTube videos out there already on how to use one. A few things that I uh, want to go over as closing that I didn't mention in this video was um, twin or triplet, etc. matching outfits. If you want to sell them as a set, you can pin and tag them accordingly for one price for set, but um, you won't be able to separate them um, after the members and sellers shop. So you might want to take that into consideration. Um, we're looking into having Boy, girl, twin sets. This again only applies if you have twins. Um, you might have a separate rack. We'll let you know if that happens. You can fold your clothes as well. If you run out of hangers, they may not sell as well because it's harder to go through. 
Um, but if you do fold them, make sure again that your tag is on the right hand side of the item as you're folding it. The other thing is when you um, are entering your tags into My Sale Manager, we have um, sometimes clothes come in sized like extra small, small, medium, large. We don't allow you to use that actual marking because we need to know more specific sizes, number sizes. So you'll want to look up those size um, comparisons for that particular brand or just try your best estimate. So like I think for uh, Cat and Jack, an extra small is like a four or five. So if you can look that up and actually label it with your size, that would be great because we will have to reject any clothes that don't use the number for the size. And I think that is it. I will, at the end of this video, post the um, clothing sale sellers group that uh, on Facebook that everybody should be a member of. So you can ask your questions there. And I hope you guys all have a very successful sale.